Hello and welcome to this video. So my uh, camera is not working this morning, so <laughs> I've got, <laughs> I hope this picture of me is okay. Uh, so basically in this video, I'm just gonna go over some key points in 3.0, which really stood out to me and some things which I think are gonna be the most beneficial to me, especially in ArcViz, um, and yeah, some general thoughts and ideas about it. Okay, so let's start with the elephant in the room, and that is going to be Blender Cycles X. And as everyone has already said, it is going to be faster. Um, in this particular scene, uh, this scene in Blender Cycles 2.93, it rendered in about 25 minutes. Um, but in Blender Cycles X, it rendered in 17 and a half minutes. And in this particular scene, I saw an improvement of about 30% in render time. Um, in another scene, I actually saw um, only about 10%, so it will depend. But in general, there will be a, a advantage in render time. Okay, and another really cool feature, which I think people might not realize is actually really good in it, that is that progressive rendering is on by default. Um, I think you can still do tile method, but the progressive rendering will outperform the tiling method, which is amazing because personally I came from uh, working professionally with Corona Render, and that is a progressive renderer. And the advantage is that if you have a client, for example, and they really want some renders quickly, you can have your render going in the background and you can decide at any point, okay, I think that it's got enough samples, um, I'm just gonna save this one out. Whereas if you're doing bucket rendering, you have to wait for the whole thing to finish and you kind of have to kind of juggle the uh, the sample rates and you kind of have to figure it out. But with progressive rendering, you just set it going and you can set uh, when you want it to finish. Um, a good default setting would be to set the default noise level to 0 0.01 and then that will keep rendering until it hits that noise level and that should be pretty good for most situations. So one cool feature about progressive rendering in actual Corona Render is that Corona Render does tell you the current noise level and that was really helpful as a gauge to kind of understand where your image is at and that will be really cool to be able to see that also while it's rendering in Blender. The advantage is, is that I would always try to aim for a noise level of around 2 to 3 percent and if I saw that the render would go all the way down to about 4% and I'm running out of time, I know that that is only 1% away from my final image and that should be okay to save out. Whereas at this point, I don't really have any kind of gauge other than visually looking to see if it is at the noise level at what I suspect it should be. And that is sometimes a bit harder to judge than just a, a definite value in the corner. And what happens if you want to save your image a little bit sooner than you anticipated, you maybe run out of time, and you have to rely more on the denoiser? Well, there have been an improvement to the denoiser, which is the Open Image Denoise 1.4, and that one should be able to keep a lot more of the detail than the previous denoiser, and it should be able to work a lot better with things like hair and smaller details, which is gonna be really good for, yeah, if you basically run out of time and you need to save out a little bit sooner. Okay, so the next thing is gonna be geometry nodes. And geometry nodes is it has been around for a little bit of a while now, but in 3.0, there's gonna be a bunch more nodes um, to allow you to do a lot more things. And this is gonna be groundbreaking. I think people don't realize that what this is gonna be able to do, especially in architecture visualization. I've already seen people where they've created like procedural buildings. And after working with 3D Studio Max with the Rail Clone plugin, that one allows you to create a lot of things which you can create in geometry nodes. But geometry nodes, I think is actually gonna be able to do way more. This is going to be incredible, honestly. I, I'm super excited for this and I can't wait to dip my toes into it. I've got a lot of ideas of some things to create some certain products uh, which are going to be 100% procedural and you'll be able to scale these things into a lot of architectural visualization scenes such as roads, buildings, fences, railings, windows, doors, you know, all these things which kind of need to be varied in size. Uh, you'll be able to create these instantly and procedurally, which which will be incredible. I'm super excited for this one. Okay, so the next feature is gonna be the virtual reality in the viewport. And people may not realize how useful this is gonna be. I think this is gonna be a groundbreaking thing. Um, I think that virtual reality is definitely gonna take off, especially now fa uh, Facebook, Meta is making Metaverse, and they're gonna be making virtual reality goggles a lot more accessible. And in the industry in architecture visualization, a lot of customers do ask for 360 images um, where they, sometimes they need to be stereoscopic where you need some goggles to look around the scene. Um, but to be able to look around the scene in the viewport with virtual reality goggles and get an idea of the scale of all the items and how they work together in a 360 environment is actually incredible. For example, you might have a camera in a normal scene facing into the scene, but with a 360 image, you need to create the whole scene from front, front to back. And until you have kind of rendered it out into, into an equi image, 
Um, you then have to kind of look at that image and try to understand if you've got everything inside it. But until you bring it into a third party 360 viewer, you can't really get an understanding of how well the 360 image is going to look and kind of feel because you get a very warped idea of the perspective whereas you might render it out you might put it into the 360 viewer and then you realize that the room is a lot more cramped than you first thought so this is going to be actually incredible I, I really cannot wait to to jump into virtual reality in the viewport and look around my scene I think people are actually going to be very impressed uh, with how cool this is going to work Okay, so one of the problems I had with the previous versions of Blender was the shadow catcher. And people may not realize how kind of how bad it was. I, I hated it because, for example, it wouldn't really pick up very well the shadows from the environments, uh, but it would very strongly pick up the shadows from the lights that are in the scene. It made the shadows very unnatural and very hard to kind of work with. But now you better work with the shadow catcher and it should be able to pick up a lot more of the environment's shadows and you can then work with it in also in the compositor to really fine tune it and work and make it look how it should do. And in an architectural visualization kind of setting, that's gonna be really helpful in cases where a client has sent you a photograph and they're expecting you to place um, the building in that space. Or for example, they've sent you an interior image and they want you to to stage that interior or that particular photograph. Um, so you would use FSpy, you'd get the correct measurements for the scene, and all you need to do now is put down a few shadow catchers on the walls and the floors, and you'll then be able to pick up some very natural um, shadows and lighting, which you can then composite into the photograph. Okay, so another big improvement to Cycles is gonna be the viewport navigation while Cycles is active. And the responsiveness to this is gonna be game-changing. You'll be able to work on your rendered scene, you'll be able to work with it with almost 100% na natural lighting, add on the denoiser on top, and you can fly around the scene and look and check out how this is actually gonna look in the final render almost instantly without any kind of lag, which is gonna be, a, which is which is incredible. Um, I really cannot wait to get into this and work with some real projects and see how much of improvement this makes. Another improvement is gonna be the saving and loading times. We cannot underestimate how much time this is gonna save, especially in some big projects. We have a scene on iMesh, uh, which is one gigabyte in size, and this is this is a big file. This has everything, and, you, and a lot of these big, big projects are gonna be very large. And the amount of time you're gonna save by these improved saving times, they must still be talked about and people must understand that this is gonna be a huge game changer for productivity going forwards. Okay, and the Blender Asset Manager. So this one is incredible improvement. I'm so glad that they finally have an asset manager built into the system because it was kind of a long time coming. And yeah, I'm not gonna go into this in too much detail. I think it's an incredible improvement, uh, but there's already a million other videos about how this can improve on productivity. Um, but we do, as you, as you do know, we do have an iMesh asset manager. And I just wanna say that we had a million people asking us, how is the new asset manager gonna be working alongside our iMesh asset manager? And I don't want to give too much stuff away, but we are we are working on something and I'm very excited for it and I really, really cannot wait for this release. And it's definitely going to have its place alongside the Blender Asset Manager. Yeah, keep an eye out for that. We're going to be releasing videos about that in the next couple of months or so. So I'm excited for that. Okay, so in answer to the question, is 3.0 going to be helpful for architectural visualization? And that is going to be a definitive yes. Every single improvement is going to be an improvement in productivity, even if it's just going to be a 5% improvement in every single area. In general, it's going to all add up to be an incredible update. If we, if people are able to make use of all the geometry nodes to help people in productivity in ArcViz, to the render times, which was always a problem with ArcViz in Blender, to the, even the saving times, every single step is making this much more of a dream to work with and i think what the blender developers have done is an incredible job and 3.0 has been the most anticipated version and i'm so glad that it's out and i cannot wait to get my head into all these new features